All right, so let's do some pretty cool stuff. So we've seen that we can approximate a function pretty well near a point by replacing it by its tangent line. But come on, I mean, a tangent line, a line is not the same as a function. So it provides a good first order approximation, but it's clearly not the same. Can we do better than that? Well, my claim is that we can, and that's exactly what we'll do in this video. So let's get started. All right, so the linear approximation of a function was the idea of replacing that function by its tangent line. Another way of saying that is that we're taking the function and replacing it by a linear function that I'll call t1 of x, so that's a degree 1 polynomial, such that the value of the function and the polynomial are the same, and also the first derivatives agree. Now, this is the same thing as saying that the polynomial defines the tangent line, because indeed, the tangent line intersects the curve at x equals to a, and also f prime of a gives the slope of the tangent line. All right, but can we do better than that? Can we find better approximations by replacing f of x by higher degree polynomials. My claim is that we can. So let's do it first for a degree 2 polynomial. So instead of talking about a linear polynomial, let's now try to find a degree 2 approximation of our function. So how do we do that? Let t2 of x be a quadratic polynomial, degree 2 polynomial, such that it agrees, the value of the polynomial agrees with the value of the function, the first derivatives agree, and also the second derivatives agree. So that's one extra condition here. My claim is that we can find such a degree 2 polynomial, and if we can, then we say that replacing the function by this degree 2 polynomial is the quadratic approximation of the function near x equals to a. Now, of course, this is a better approximation than the linear approximation, because now we're satisfying three conditions instead of only two. What we're doing geometrically is that we're approximating the function here by replacing it by a parabola instead of a line, so that's a better, that's a better approximation. Okay, but how can we find this degree 2 polynomial? Well, let's try to do that explicitly. So what we're trying to find is a quadratic polynomial such that it satisfies these three conditions. My claim is that the following polynomial will be exactly the one we're looking for. So t2 of x should be f of a plus f prime evaluated at a times x minus a plus f double prime at a over 2 times x minus a square. My claim is that this degree 2 polynomial, this is clearly degree 2 in x, this degree 2 polynomial satisfies these three constraints. Okay, so let's prove that. First constraint is that t2 of a should be equal to the value of the function at x equals to a. But if I replace x equals to a here, this term vanishes, this term vanishes, so all I'm left with is f of a, which is indeed what I should be finding. Check. First condition is satisfied. All right, so let's check the second condition. So I want the first derivatives to agree, so I need to calculate the first derivative of my degree 2 polynomial. Just calculating the first derivative here, I'll get f prime of a plus, here I need to use the chain rule, there's a 2 coming down, I get f double prime of a times x minus a. But to satisfy the condition, I need to evaluate that at x equals to a. And if I do evaluate this expression at x equals to a, this term vanishes. All I'm left with is f prime of a. Check. Second condition is satisfied. And what about the third one? So here I need to calculate the second order derivative of t2 of x. So I take the derivative of this expression here. All I'm left with is f double prime of a. Check. Third condition is satisfied. So here it is. What we found here is an explicit expression for a degree 2 polynomial, quadratic polynomial, that approximate the function near x equals to a. This is called the degree 2 Taylor polynomial. Can we do better than that? Why do we stop at degree 2? Can't we just keep going and do higher degree approximations of functions? Well, indeed we can. How do we do that? Here it is. So let td of x, now you see the notation becomes clear, t2 of x was our quadratic polynomial. td of x will be a degree d polynomial such that its value at x equals to a agrees with the function value, but also all its derivatives agree with the derivatives of the function for all the derivatives between the first order derivative and the order d derivatives. So now we have here d conditions on the derivative plus 1 for the value of the function itself. If we can find such a degree d polynomial, then we say that replacing the function by this degree d polynomial is the degree d approximation of our function, the x equals to a. And of course, the claim is that we can indeed find such degree d polynomials under some conditions on the function that we will not talk about 
Here, well, the main condition is just that you can actually differentiate the function all the way to order d. So if we can find such derivatives, then the polynomial t d of x is called the degree d, Taylor polynomial of our function, and it has a very explicit expression. So this is the generalization of our previous expression. So the first two terms give the tangent line, or the degree 1 polynomial. First three terms gave the quadratic polynomial. But then you keep adding up terms, which are always of the same form, so there should be an a here. The, the derivative, the order, say r derivative here of our function evaluated at a, over r factorial times x minus a to the r. And this is true for all integers all the way to d, and you just add up the whole thing. That gives you a degree d polynomial, and it is easy to prove that uh, it satisfies all the conditions here. The proof is very similar to what we just did for the quadratic case. Now here I have this notation here in the denominators. This is what we call a factorial. So k factorial means that you're taking the product of all the integers between 1 and k. So for example, 3 factorial would mean that you take 1 times 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. Okay, so this is the degree d polynomial, and it, this provides a very good, well, depending on the degree, the higher the degree, the better the approximation of f of x at x equals to a. And in fact, uh, you could keep going. Why did we stop at a finite d? You could keep going all the way to infinity and just keep adding up these terms to provide better, better and better and better approximations of our function. And you could ha end up with an infinite summation of term here, which should provide an infinitely precise approximation of the function. Now this is called the Taylor series. So we haven't talked about series, but we'll talk a little bit about that in class. What you can prove if you have an infinite summation here, you can prove that in fact the infinite summation converges to precisely the value of the function uh, around x equals to a. So it does provide not only an approximation then, but like an exact uh, kind of formula for the function near x equals to a. Okay, but we'll talk more about Taylor series in class. Now we're going to stick to Taylor polynomials for now. So all I want to do now to end this video is give you an example of how you could calculate a higher degree Taylor polynomial for a given function. So we'll come back to our function uh, f of x equals to sine of x. So we've already calculated that the linearization of f of x equals sine of x, I should say here, near x equals to 0, is uh, just replacing it by its tangent line, which was just y equals to x. Okay, but now what about higher degree approximations? So I'll calculate here the degree 3 approximation. So what I want to do is calculate the degree 3 Taylor polynomial of sine of x near x equals to 0. So this will be given by f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x minus 0 plus f double prime at 0 over 2 factorial times x minus 0 squared plus f triple prime and 0 over 3 factorial times x minus 0 to the power of 3. And then I stop here because I'm only interested in the degree 3 approximation of our function. So this is a degree 3 polynomial. Okay, so to calculate the degree 3 polynomial here, all I have to do is calculate the derivative, the, 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 the derivatives all the way to order 3 of our function and evaluate at x equals to 0. But this is pretty easy to do for our function. So the function is sine of x. First derivative of sine of x is cos of x. Second derivative here will be minus sine of x. Then the third derivative will be minus cos of x. All right, and then I need to evaluate at x equals to 0 <coughs> to get the expression for the Taylor polynomial. So I get f at 0 is equal to sine of 0, which is 0. f prime at 0 is cos of 0, which is 1. f double prime at 0 is minus sine of 0, which is 0. And f triple, triple prime at 0 is minus cos of 0, which is minus 1. And all I have to do now is substitute all of that in my expression for the Taylor polynomial. So what I get is that t3 of x is equal to this term is 0, this term becomes just x, this term is 0, this term becomes x cubed over 3 factorial, where we call that here 3 factorial is equal to 6, we just calculated in the previous slide. So here I get, uh, sorry, that's minus x cubed over 3 factorial, so I get minus x cubed over 6. And this thing here I just calculated is the degree 3 Taylor polynomial 
of sine of x near x equals to 0. Now the first term here provides the linear uh, approximation. This now provides a better approximation, which is a cubic approximation of the sine function near x equals to 0. So you could graph, for example, this, or you could graph just x and this and sine of x, and you will see that this is actually a better approximation. And what you could do from a physics point of view, remember that the reason why we're interested in that is that if you study the pendulum in physics, what you want to do is replace sine theta by theta, which is valid for small angles. Now, if you wanted to get a more precise result for your pendulum, then you could replace sine theta by theta minus theta cubed over 6, and that would provide a better uh, approximation of the result. And you could keep going here. I uh, just add higher and higher degree, and you will get uh, better and better approximations of uh, the result for the pendulum.